One of the things I hate about uh, Western media, and maybe, maybe here I'm, <clears throat> I, I might be lacking some information because I'm not aware of everything what goes on in every media, in every corner of the world. So, but about Western media, as I've I've grown up seeing it uh, being transformed. It used to be that uh, there were the respectable newspapers, and there would be the you know the, these other things, storytellers, uh, mostly bullshit, and there was reserved to a niche of the population. I mean, mo it was mostly for entertainment. A lot of this information, but no one was would really take them seriously. But now, all the major outlets are adhering to this kind of uh, journalism. You know, with the with these uh, flashy titles and, for example. Uh, and this I've read on the Portuguese media, of course. It is on other media as well, because the Russians are already making fun of it. That the title was Vladimir Putin endorses Kamala Harris or supports Kamala Harris. Uh, and the title was there. It was not, uh, I mean, support between quotation marks or nothing like that it was plain title and then you would start to read the lead of the news and only like halfway and if you pay enough attention to it you realize that uh, Vladimir Putin was joking and and it's but it's obnoxious the way because I believe that maybe half of the people or more never got to the lead, never got that far. They got the title, and that's it. It would be very strange. People don't even stop to realize, and that's that's a piece of news which is being made, or with the purpose to sell clicks and that shit and if you <laughs> you don't have to think that much or if you like to follow this international geopolitics you would immediately realize without reading anything that Vladimir Putin does not do such statements and that's that's it it's not it's not the style it's not we project this Western mania style onto others. Mostly we project the bad shit that we do onto the Russians. And then, but I I found it somewhat funny. So uh, I went to uh, look for the video where uh, uh, the president of the Russian Federation speaks about this. And the statement was made at the Eastern Economic Forum in Far East Russia and it was and it was a joke for the audience laughter I mean it was and that's of course that that's all it was I got no no surprise there and but still it makes a joke and still it makes headlines out of context badly told disinformation even with the joke. So you see the level of this. Because this was no... This was no uh, ordinary outlet or like one of those uh, petty newspaper that focus on petty crimes and a lot of... Uh, a lot of pro people's problems and... Who killed who and the likes. When I say people's problems, I, I, I mean uh, not not the structural problems. Although many of those news do get fed 
by problems that arise from structural problems, like poverty and inequality, and then you have social unrest and you have poor families, poor environments where children grow, crime-ridden environments, and all of that is it's profitable for these corporations that make this petty news. So that's what I mean when I say people's problems. Because if they would really report on people's problems, they would, if, they, if, the, if that was their uh, goal, they would be worried about giving you an understanding of how those problems arise. Or why are they present in our society. And I talk a lot of times, I talk a lot of times about the media, you know, Western media. And then I saw this, um, there's this YouTube channel, it's called Russian Disinfo. And it's, uh, it's supposed to be a channel that focus, or Russian media monitor, but it has this uh, watermark uh, saying Russian Disinfo. It, which is, I think it's supposed to be, or at least I thought in the beginning, it was supposed to be a channel to uh, highlight the bullshit in, uh, for example, in Russian state media talk shows. Highlight the propaganda uh, in order to expose it. So, and <laughs> and today I, I, I took a look at the video from this channel about this subject, about the words of uh, Mr. Putin, and they were talking about the the crackdown on Pavel Durov, rightfully so. I didn't see any propaganda there. But then they made jokes about it, for example, referring to, referring to uh, Donald Trump as Nash Donald, our Donald, you know, because of all the accusations, because of all the fuss invented in the West about the the Russian meddling in the when Trump was running against Hillary Clinton, and then they they passed this clip. So today I, I they passed this clip of Vladimir Putin in the EEF also, and they were they were astonished how the West was was doing a crackdown on freedom of speech, not only on corporate freedom of speech, like for example, big companies as, uh, uh, as Telegram, for example, but also on, on small, the so-called uh, vloggers and bloggers, and for example, like the likes of Scott Ritter. As if you are not aware, Scott Ritter had his house searched by the FBI, they apprehended is electronics devices, computer and cell phone. They interrogated him. He goes to great length talk, talking about this. You can go and check it on YouTube. He describes the details better than I do. I mean, not. I'm, I'm not going to even mention the, all those banned from YouTube. But it, it's being. It's happening. It, it's real crackdown on freedom of speech. Now I think Pavel Durov faces several dozens of years in, in prison. And you have Russian state media discussing this and has an absurd, right? I mean, his family was dissident from the Soviet Union. He ended up leaving Russia only to be arrested in the West by practicing his business. Why, why is it, I mean, you can argue that, oh, but you know, Russia had problems too. Yeah, 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 he had, he was not arrested, never. And, and they left him alone. But here he got arrested and he faces uh, serious sentences. And especially from a block of countries that claim that free speech is sacred, freedom is sacred. I keep repeating this, but this is, I mean, this is on every day you, you open, for example, statements from the, from the White House, 
Department of State, the Pentagon, whatever. They keep repeating these sentences that uh, the freedoms and we are concerned about the freedoms, concerned about democracy, concerned about speech. They're always concerned about the good things. And it's the opposite. It's it's the complete opposite. And it's, uh, it's an utter hypo hypocrisy if you only keep pointing the finger at uh, Russia and China, in which I suspect more and more just a suspicion of mine that the, you have more freedom there than over here. Uh, it's not. It's not paradise. It's not like uh, you, you cannot. You can never fall into the trap to demonize one side and glorify or sanctify the other. That's that's. In it doesn't matter who you defend. Or who you think is who do you think is right? It's always a mistake to do this. Every uh, in every place there are problems, but when you are in a place where you claim to have to uphold a certain set of values, and you do exactly the opposite, that's when it gets serious, right? Uh, because the Russians, whenever they crack down on movements, they they do. I mean, they don't hide it. They say these guys were doing this or that. They they are quite plain about it. Uh, I'm not going to say it's a perfect system again, but it's uh, it's more obvious, and you at least you are you know what you can count on. You know what to expect, right? If you are deceived, thinking that you live in the freest part, the most, the example of the world, the garden, as Mr. Borel puts it, versus the jungle, just by having leaders saying this kind of stuff, you see the direction the Western powers are heading. So it's a general crackdown on, on freedom of speech here. Uh, I've talked about this uh, to people that say, no, oh, but you look at you, you have a channel, you say whatever you want and you have no problems. Well, not quite. I'm not, of course, I don't face any charges because my channel has very little views. Just few thousand subscribers but I, I did have already a video erased by YouTube for no moral reason justifiable moral or legal reason just their own policy don't forget that their own policy is not law it's not the law so you have companies actually they are doing this shit they are why do you have laws of free speech and it's written in your constitution when then you have companies operating in your country that don't respect them? See where this is heading? This is heading to a dystopia, you know, as far as I'm concerned. And it's an escalation also. It's an escalation on behalf of the West, on part of the West, sorry. Uh, and this escalation goes together with the escalation on the ground, on the military aspects of, of things. Because you have an increasingly harsher tone towards Russia and China. You have an increasing supply of more deadly... I don't... deadly is not the word, but different kinds of weapons to Ukraine and uh, one thing that Scott Ritter said recently is that we are closer than never to nuclear war of course Scott Ritter I have to lay down my opinion about him I followed him for a long time uh, I value its work I value its knowledge 
his capacity for uh, for thinking, for logic. But I do not like everything about Scott Ritter. I was uh, you remember <laughs> you remember Gonzalo Lira, Gonzalo Lira, who were, was killed by the country that is defending democracy, Ukraine. Uh, as a kind of also a journalist arrested there and then killed. He didn't like Scott Ritter. I, I really, he never justified it quite well, but he didn't like the guy. He, he did express that clearly. Never said the reasons. And when I was following Scott Ritter, for example, in the early stages of the war, Scott Ritter did something that I usually hate on Western media, on the Western side of propaganda, and I've mentioned many times, which uh, not only Scott Ritter, but Scott Ritter and General uh, Colonel Doug Douglas McGregor, which I value, which I respect. And I also respect Scott Ritter, because I think he does a good job in uh, many times, let's say like this. But these times was like when people were having this hunger, I think at the peak of the hunger for information of, because everyone was like caught by surprise, why Russian crossed the border into Ukraine, uh, Russians incursion into Ukraine, blah, 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 and then everyone wanted to know what's going on. And one of the few leading voices out of the mainstream media, the, the, the ones that you could trust that they were not propaganda, from mainstream media was Scott Ritter and Colonel Douglas McGregor. And I, uh, I remember according to them, it was, it was a route for Ukraine and Russians were wrapping it up in no time. Of course, nothing like that happened, as you all know. And I was a bit disappointed at that because uh, it's not, of course, people cannot predict the future accurately, even if they are experts. But that really went a little bit to the side. A little bit to, a little bit to the side and way, way, way from the right post. <laughs> and so from that day, I started looking more critically at what Scott Ritter had to say and also Colonel McGregor. But Colonel McGregor, I've heard him uh, admit uh, his mistakes. Uh, I think also Scott Ritter, but still. So you have to be on alert. You have to be on alert. But it doesn't matter, nothing like that. Whatever opinion you have of, of Scott Ritter, it doesn't justify the persecution by the FBI doesn't and I think in my opinion uh, platforms like YouTube the one I'm on and others should always uh, abide by local laws sometimes they they do this but it's always on the side of the repression never on the side of the freedoms right so yeah I don't see good times ahead. I do see more and more people moving to Russia and being welcomed there. Namely Americans and Canadians and British. And they all claim the same, which is a land of opportunity. I think the tide has changed. Let's see. Let's hope we do not wake up one day to a nuclear winter. Okay, guys. Uh, if you value freedom of speech, if you value democracy, if you value non-biased channels, I do not follow any agenda. I do not. Uh, I say what I think. If my opinion changes because of new, because of input of new information, 
I will express that. I do not follow clicks, so I'm really I really suck at managing social media because I do whatever I feel like doing. And uh, when you are a YouTuber and you live from that, you cannot be like that. You gotta appeal to a certain audience. You gotta see the market, feel the market, see the trends and go after them. And that for me would be a prison. If, if I had to do that, I, then I would get fed, fed up with it. Uh, after a time and would quit it. It's, it's, it. it's not freedom for me. It's the same as running after money. I go after money the minimum that I can. The minimum. Minimum to survive. The rest is just a prison. It's just slavery. Even if you are rich, if you spend all your time, because time is what you have most value, you spend all your time accumulating, you have no freedom. If you are poor, you have to spend too much time just for surviving, you have no freedom as well. So I try to make the compromise, but this YouTube, I do it for, for pleasure, let's say. I like to do it. I hope I see you on the next one.